Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Now you guys know I got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of projects to do. Let's see, I got the Black Beauty XJ. Black Beauty is sitting on the slab back there. It's waiting on me to do the rear disc brake conversion. I just need a couple nice days in a row to get that done. Uh, I got the General Grievous ZJ over here. General Grievous needs a headliner. It also needs a sunroof, so that project's been waiting to be done. Uh, I also got the Commander over here. I got my Jeep Commander. The Commander, I'm going to upgrade some of its electronics in the near future. Uh, I want to take it on a drive, and I want to make sure the entertainment system is top-notch for the kids. So I got that to do. Let's see, I got Project Rec J. Rec J, I'm um, kicking off. I'm going to restore or repair that smashed XJ. And uh, when I get that running, we're going to do uh, an off-road XJ with that thing. We're going to do something bigger, a little more aggressive with that thing. Let's see, I got... I got my beach jeep. I got <laughs> two XJs chopped in half, and they're being welded together. That's going to take some time. So I got a bunch of things on my plate, a bunch of projects to sort out, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, I do know that the last thing I wanted to do was work on this WJ without the title. So um, what happened was, what happened is, the current situation with this is, it's dripping like a ton of power steering fluid. It's got that hydro fan. The hydraulic fan is powered by power steering fluid, I believe. And that whole thing is shot. Uh, it's got a blown radiator. Radiator. <laughs> and uh, I need to do the radiator, power steering pump, and I need to do the fan. So um, I wasn't going to touch that thing because it sounds like an expensive project. But... Uh, I don't want it leaking all over the place. So I figured I would go to the junkyard and see if they had some parts available. So I had a little list of parts I was inquiring about. And literally as I asked for them, <laughs> the clerk said, hey, turn around. There they are right there. A new WJ was being brought in on a flatbed trailer ready for me to get first dibs at it. So when the Lord provides, <laughs> you got to take advantage of that. So it looks like I'm going to be working on this WJ, right? So, I got parts. Ton of WJ parts. Now, <laughs> I need a place to put them for my WJ project. And uh, I don't want to put them in the basement. I don't want to put them in a tent. I don't want to put them in my garage. <laughs> so, I figured I would put them in here. Can't get this open. Why can't I store my WJ parts in a WJ? Typical Jeep hatch fails to open. Now, I know I've had... ZJ hatches stuck. I had XJ hatches stuck. I thought by the time we reached the WJ that they'd have this problem sorted out. <laughs> so here's what's going to go on. While I sort out this problem, I'm going to send you over to Southern California to my good buddy Mark Miller and his son Brandon. And we're going to go take a look at his awesome two door XJ. So what's up, Mark? Hey, good evening, Jeep lovers. This is Mark uh, from California, Southern California. Friend of Dan Hart, asked for over 10 years, I think. Um, this is my son's Jeep. He had asked me to give kind of a walk around, tell you what we did for the vehicle. Um, well, the latest project was this front bumper. Um, it was a stock bumper that we, we modified the ends and then we wrapped or linered it. My son's a welder and he uh, did a real good job fabricating it. Behind it, we had the shackle mounts with a heavy plate of I think at least eighth inch steel mounted to the factory bumper mounts. Rough Country LED light, I think it's a 20 inch light bar. Um, cut into it, recessed, thought it turned out really well. Wiring went really well. Um, he has smoked out the headlights. So these were originally a clear white and these uh, subdued a little with tint as well. Um, LED replacement headlights. We spray painted the grill, and then uh, even the Jeep emblem, we we use kind of a bed liner uh, to texture that. Notice on the hood, uh, all Jeeps, uh, four O's, it seems to have this uh, overheating issue. So especially here in Southern California, with all the aftermarket mods, it adds some weight to the vehicle. And when you get out in the desert heat and the and the climbing really do take a toll on on the engine temp. So it's just a way for that heat to escape. Uh, it's not just a stick-on cosmetic mod, it's it's cut right through. Uh, and in the engine for the cooling system, we did uh, upgrade to 
Um, we removed the clutch fan. We upgraded to three uh, much higher volume uh, radi um, radiator fans, electric fans, with um, I think a one and a half time. Uh, I think it's a three row. Three row. Something like uh, that. Aluminum radiator. I think all that has marginally helped. <laughs> I think the next thing we want to do is go with a high flow water pump and uh, thermostat, housing. thermostat housing and thermostat so we can get through that. Engine, I think the only thing that we did, as with a lot of 4.0s, the uh, exhaust manifold cracks. And rather than replacing it with stock, we went with a header. I think for the engine, just your typical oil leaks. We did the valve cover, the oil filter, relocation. Um, uh, the gasket? Some, yeah, the relocation uh, mount gasket. And uh, we also did the rear main seal and the oil pan. Uh, I think all with Felpro <clears throat> gaskets. Um, pretty much under here, I think other than just the, the wiring for the fans, um, for the light bar, and for the radio system, is probably all the modifications we did here. Other than the basic tune-up, you know, we did uh, plugs and wires, uh, cap rotor when we first got it. We got the vehicle probably March of 2018, May, May of 2018. May, yep. May of 2018. Uh, for about $1,500, it was a rolling wreck. Uh, floor pans had huge holes in it. Uh, Brandon welded new floor pans, front, rear, and even the rear deck. We patch paneled that. We also did front wheel bearings, all new brakes, calipers, rotors, pads. Um, we also uh, went with originally the Rough Country lift. Uh, it was kind of a rough ride, and as he was able to save a little bit more money he was able to go with the four and a half inch bds lift kit came with fox shocks long arm new springs we went with the american racing i think it's 15 by 8 tires and rims yep i'm gonna get 35 inch tall tires by 12 and a half i'm keeping the same lift so in order to fit 35s i need to get new fender flares obviously i gotta do at least four 10 gearing lockers eventually I'm going to re-bedline this. This is all rusted out, so i got to replace the rocker. Um, then re-bedline that. Um, but yeah. Come around the front here, we, under, and underneath, we did the uh, Rough Country steering stabilizer. That helped, so there's no vibration at highway speeds. And I think we upgraded to the, the larger track bar. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, underneath, it's really dry, no oil leaks. This thing has made it from cross country. We went from St. Louis out to Jersey, back to St. Louis, and then St. Louis to Southern California. Uh, so it has traveled cross country. When we were going to New Jersey, we had problem with the uh, tranny fluid overheating. And so we did put a trans cooler in that seemed to eliminate the problems. And we got to California without it, without it blowing up. I don't know if you can see it, but it sits behind it's right here. Uh, the, the front grill. And in front of the radiator. It was a pretty easy install. No, no challenges there. Uh, let's walk around to uh, uh, this side here. He has obviously, again, darkened out the logos, tinted the windows. I think it's 20%. Something like that. Um, and we, somebody gave us the roof rack, which kind of great for here if we want to do a little overlanding. Uh, but we can also do some hill climbing and, and off-roading type stuff there's there's plenty of trailers here in southern california um <clears throat> in the inside we upgraded with the new gauge cluster um with and, and which caused us to update i think the water temperature and the, the oil and the oil pressure oil, oil pressure gauges we installed seats wj seats wj seats a couple of different mounting holes but uh, pretty much plug and play they were falling apart the originals they were collapsing we re-welded them and they started to collapse again uh, this now it feels like you're riding on a sofa um, as with a lot of the older jeeps we had headliner issues and uh, so my son and his <laughs> love for donuts uh, went a little off off script and went with the donut headliner some of you may love it some of you may hate it most people love most it. people love it so yeah. uh, we'll walk around to the side here we we had a uh, Smittybilt. Smittybilt bumper with the uh, with the tailgate uh, mounted tire and the uh, jerry can. Jerry can. If you do get the Smittybilt, make sure you get the right jerry can. We tried three or four different ones at seam before we realized that Smittybilt had designed this. You can see there's very little 
tolerance and clearance here. So this is only the only Jerry can. I think it's from Midwest Can Company. They build it around not a typical Jerry can, but this specific Jerry can. Um, it, yeah, we open in the back here. We did put speakers in the rear because uh, there was only, I think, just the door speakers. Yeah. Um, we did put an aftermarket stereo. I didn't go crazy with the sound system, but we did get an integrated sub amp combination here. Again, the seats fit really stock. These seats came out of a uh, 80s limited Cherokee, I think. This is a 96. Yeah. Uh, I think we got it with 160,000 miles for like $1,500. So again, it was a rolling wreck, but we gave it a lot of love and it really has come to life. He's, he's also uh, tinted the rear tail lights and replaced the lights with LED. Um, so the bulbs are LED. It just, it just kind of darkens things out and uh, I thought it has a good look to it. Redid the exhaust. I don't remember the exhaust that is that is there it is an aftermarket exhaust I think just a cheap one from like rock AutoZone auto zone rock or, auto. yeah rock auto and here's a i made the oh the flagpole the flagpole too just Rolled out of like a few brackets and and representing <laughs> and here's a surprise for you he uh so the california you got to have the doors off so he did a, a hinge modification so that he can slide the doors on and off um, I'm gonna hold the phone and let him put the door on so you guys can see how it's easy it is um, I'll talk to you for a minute. So Again, he he did a quick wire disconnect so there's a disconnect for the wires here for the speakers um, and so he is He's gonna put it on The hinge just pinched lines up And that's it folks it's on he's gonna hook the wires up for the speaker there is a pin that goes into that door release um, it's kind of normally is more permanent but this one uh, is one that just kind of drops in so you'll hear it click when he goes to shut it but it was just because uh, all right so that's pretty much it aftermarket um, uh, stereo I don't know if you can see it very well it's nothing to get excited about, but it does have Bluetooth capability. Created our own center console. It's nothing fancy, but it does hold a cup and uh, open up so you can have some storage here. Um, again, we did do all the floorboards in here with Dynomat. It's like a, a metallic bubble paper that helps with heat from the you know exhaust and the engine. Pretty tight. I think uh, that pretty much covers it. ZJ rear disc brake. Oh yeah, we did a rear disc brake conversion from the Z CJ. I don't know if you can see it, but there is maybe a better view from behind. Um, pretty straightforward. Hold on. I think these are the Dana 30 in the front and a 35 in a rear. Uh, eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter. Chrysler eight and a quarter. I made the oh, shackle relocation brackets. The, the, get a better ride out of it. They say ride. still rides terrible, but whatever. Jeep. Yeah. All right. So that's, that's our project XJ. Um, we've got some future plans. Still trying to talk him into to a stroke remoter, but uh, I, I want to LS it. So. LS it. Well, I don't know. We'll <laughs> there's always something to do, as you know, with Jeeps. There's there's work to be done. Hey, thanks for watching, and uh, Dan, keep doing what you're doing. God bless. Bye. Thank you, Mark. God bless you too, brother. Brandon, keep on welding. Your skills are awesome. Keep it up. You got a great fabricating future, and that's great if you like Jeeps, especially rusty old XJs. So this was a really simple fix. Figured it out in two seconds. All you need is two tools. You got to have your vice grips to prop up this flip glass, and you need your screwdriver. You got to take out these screws right here, so you're able to bend this forward. Then once you're inside, simple. Found the problem right here. But just like the XJs and the ZJs, that little tiny threaded rail comes off its clip. Yep, that's the culprit right there. That's what gets all the Jeeps. XJs, ZJs, and now apparently WJs. And WJs have two of them. It's got one here for the left side and one here for the right side. Let's see, let me pull the lever. Yep. And obviously the one that's disconnected isn't releasing the side I need it to. So, very simple fix. All we gotta do is get in here. Let's see if we can pull this out 
There we go. There we go. The plastic clip clamped right down on that threaded piece. All right, let's see if it pulls. Yup, that's it. There we go. Yo, look who it is. Alex Billion in the house, stopping by for a quick visit. What's going on, brother? Look at this sweet XJ. Dirty. Nah, your dirty days are cleaner than my clean days. Follow Alex at AlexBillion underscore. All right, let's see if that did the trick. <laughs> I thought that was me. <laughs> yeah, it worked. All right. The struts work too. Jackpot. Easy peasy, guys. All right, guys. That was a real easy fix. I'm not even going to put a zip tie on it because it's just two screws. And then I could pull this out, get to it anytime I want. So, no big deal. That is fixed. Now, I'm dying to see what's in here underneath this spare tire cover. So this thing had some nasty chrome clad overland rims. I actually had to cut one off to put on these Moab wheels. So I'm curious to see what's in this spare tire cover. Is it gonna be a donut? Is it gonna be one of those chrome clad wheels? If it's nice and shiny, I could sell it on eBay. Oh, I ain't selling that. <laughs> this is going straight to the scrapper. Oh my goodness. What is this? <laughs> Power steering fluid. <laughs> All right, WJ is open. Here are my WJ parts. I got a whole new set of door panels. I got a whole set of black leather seats. Not in the greatest shape, but... They're better than, than what I got in here. Check this out. I, I love the Overland, but I really don't like that really bright, contrasty light leather with the, with the dark. Eh, doesn't float my boat, guys. So this is the seats. Not terrible. Pretty dirty. Uh, a few tatters in here. But uh, those have got to go. I like this. It's, it's, it's a nice shape. This console pad. It's really cool, but... I gotta get a black one. Forgot to get the black one. And uh, take a look at this really quick. Um, these seats don't even match. We do have our privacy cover back here. This works, but it's gonna get in the way of all my stuff that I gotta put in here. So let's see. Slide that over, and now we can fill it. Right, guys that is a wrap for this video thank you so much mark and brendan for sharing with us your two-door xj it looks amazing glad you're doing well out there miss you love you and uh looks like we got ourselves some wj content so we'll start out easy with the interior swap and then now uh, we can go along and move into something more difficult like the hydro fan delete oh boy but uh yeah that's it guys so remember to like remember to subscribe share this video and i'll catch you on the next project peace